Hello there, Red McNed here, and welcome to my tutorial on waterfalls. And since we're dealing with waterfalls, this is going to kind of cross into just water in general. So, let me start by saying this, posing this. You find yourself in Minecraft, you're walking around, doing the things, having fun, building, possibly with friends, maybe by yourself, you know, and you're like, yeah, this is great, I have my base. But, you know, there's this mountain beside me. And I think, oh, waterfall, yeah, so let's do it. And so you probably do something like pick a spot on, you know, whatever. And sometimes you get something like this. And maybe to the casual player, they think, ah, good enough, that looks good. But I would pose that there are certain flaws with this waterfall. <laughs> um, for one, here, I'll just, I'll just lay it all down for you. There's no source, there's no destination, there's no purpose, there's no thing should just quit. There's, the, only, the only real thing it does is defy reality, kind of, for the amount of water it, it creates. So, I have a few tips and solutions to kind of help with this. And to start us off, before we just jump into making this more realistic, or my, my consi what I consider to be more realistic, we sh I think that we should first talk a little bit about Watcher. And I've got a few things to say about it before we start. Um, Etho has a pretty good video on the mechanics of water. So I'll just be brief here, but I'm going to have a link next to the step in this description for this video. But I'll start out by giving a few uh, facts. One is that water flows from in five directions from every source block. And that includes down. So actually this would probably be better. If you put water down, it's going to flow in five directions. Back, front, left, and right. So all the sideways ones and straight down. And it will always try to do that. Um, if the water is flowing down and it hits a solid block, that becomes a new source block. And then from there, the water tries to flow in all the different directions. Um, more information we'll need for this is that water flows seven blocks in length. So if you are going to have water flowing and you want it to flow a maximum distance and then drop down, you have to count seven blocks and take it out. That becomes a new source block. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's as far as it'll go. You have to keep going down. Um, I guess other things I want to mention about water is that this is this is like a sort of a flow chart. <laughs> Get it? Flow chart, and it shows where water can go. Now, if you put this down, each color represents one directional space that it can go. So, for instance, water might go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But it could also kind of be a little chaotic in where it goes, and it kind of can go everywhere, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like these are all the potential flow points of the water to go. And since there's nothing obstructing it, like say we put this down, it wouldn't reach all the way out here because the water has to curve around it. And then you take it away, it goes away. So I'll actually explain that a little bit more right here. Um, if let's just count this out with the same num same uh, methods over there. If you go one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. That's one of the spots on that chart. And also, 
This is going to be a little different, I promise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's another choice. So water can also flow anywhere inside, but the stronger current will uh, prevail. So see, like this goes out there. But if we were to put blocks around this and sort of guide the stream, you'll see that the water flows exactly to this spot where I put the thing there. So water will kind of follow whatever path you give it and it will go seven spots and it won't jump diagonally. Another kind of strange feature, this is where we get to the kind of weird stuff. And I think this is the last thing we may need to know before actually going into waterfall design proper, is that you'd think that anywhere you put water it would spread out evenly. But you can get stuff that's kind of weird like this, where it just goes one direction. It seems like just make a line straight for the edge. And water will actually try pretty hard to get to that edge sometimes. And sometimes it even does stuff like this, where it goes for two edges. And you're like, what? What is this? So I'll go on to explain that here. Water will spread out to all the potential areas it, it can possibly go, unless there's a spot within five blocks that has a spot for it to flow down. So one, two, three, four, five. If we were to take away this, the water is going to go straight to it. Or if you had, say, two of them, then the water would go to both because they're the same distance. Now, if you had one that was a little bit closer, the water would do whatever it can to get there. Uh, and, you know, you can get as close to the, you know, any, any distances. And I realized that that last statement didn't make sense, but it was also an unnecessary statement because this is the time for me to wrap up what this all means. Using all this information, you can basically make a waterfall, design it before it even exists. And you may think that sounds crazy, but I will explain. If you know how water is going to flow, you can sort of plan for it ahead of time. And I have kind of a method for this, for um, uh, designing water to make sure it doesn't look stupid. Like, uh, first off, you can predict where it's going to go. If, let's say, let's use orange for uh, source blocks. And let's have it flow wherever it's going to flow is purple. So there's there's two directions it can flow, this way and this way. But it's only going to flow this way because this gap is closer. Now if it was like this, it would flow both ways. But since this is here, it's going to go for the quickest way down. So when it comes out, it's going to flow straight down. And this becomes a new source block. Now it can, there's three potential ways, but it's still going to flow straight because that's the soonest point where there's a drop off. And it's going to go straight down until it gets another spot. Judging by the same logic, it's going to do something like this. And as it keeps flowing straight down, it's going to hit these spots. It's going to flow out like this. And we're going to end up with water exactly here and here if we put a water spot there. So let's, you know, test the theory. If you if there's any naysayers or non believers out there. So yeah, you can you can predict where the water is gonna go that way, actually. And you could also sort of work it backwards. Like the mountain existed at that spot. But what if you wanted to make the water path you know, without the mountain existing. Like maybe you wanted to be crazy and design uh, the water first. So, what you might do 
is something like this. You'd have your uh, you have your water source. Let's gonna say. Let's gonna say <laughs> that it flows out from here, and you want it to do something like. You know, I want it to go this way and this way, and it can go down for a while. Um, then I want it to sort of go like this, and that, and flow down just straight down. So how would you do this? Well, you can guide it by the placement of rocks based on the physics you know of it. So if you want it to flow, you want to put a rock under anything that's that doesn't have anything under it. And if you want to guide it, then you have to be aware that in spots like this, it's going to go any direction from here. So you're going to have to sort of stop it up a little bit. You know. I like to sort of guide the waterfalls anyways that I make. And you only have to worry about that where there's sort of where the source blocks would happen, which is wherever they would hit a solid spot. So actually right now I think it's done. If you built this, you know, we can just like fill it in now. Um, something like this. Here, we'll give it like a weird area down here. <laughs> and. You know, with something that looks like this. When you put the water in, it should follow the grooves that you sort of set in place. And look at that. It's even going to have a secret area behind it. Isn't that awesome? Oh, see, I... <laughs> that's the, uh, the physics in action. There's nothing behind it. There. So that's the waterfall as planned. So you can basically design this either from the water first, like this one, or the ground first, and kind of predict where it's going to go. Personally, I think this looks kind of weird. Whenever it's like, hey, this is clearly defined physics. It should be flowing in multiple directions. So what I'll do if I'm making a waterfall is I'll probably have little, uh, you know, little bookends I guess you can call them to kind of explain why the water is flowing only a direction. And that makes it look a little bit more natural. It also looks like it sort of carved out the mountain where it's where it's going to be flowing. So with all that put together, we're going to try this mountain again. And I have created a nice duplicate mountain over here. And I'm going to do to this mountain what I think should have been done, or could have been done to that mountain to make it look better. So first off, I would think about the source. Like, where is the water coming from? You know, what's, what's its opinions? Where is, what does it have to say? You know, what's its purpose? What's it going to do on the way down? And where is it going to go? Like, that one, it's kind of not going anywhere. It's just sort of ends and it's coming from a l nowhere. So what I might do to alleviate that is you know, instead of starting at the top of a mountain, just something as simple as, you know, knocking out some spot in the middle and putting down water. So it looks like well maybe it came from like a cave or maybe I can't see further up. <clears throat> I can't see further up the mountain. Maybe there's bigger mountain stream ranges. Maybe there's a stream heading to it. Um, the other thing you can see with that one is it fanned out really far. So I like to t try to control it. So let's say if we put water up here, it would flow out 
evenly like that, how would I control the stream? Well, one thing you can do is actually map out where it's going to go. So this is where it would flow out first. And then you see, well, where is it going to drop down to? It's going to drop down to this. And it's going to drop down to this. From here, it can flow out in this way and that way. But since there's water there already, it would be redundant to put that down. So it's going to do something like that. And it's going to flow out here. This one is going to drop down to here. So now you have two source sort of things here. This one's flowing, this one's source. So this one's going to go out this way and this way. This one's going to go out this way and this way. Now, if you uh, want to sort of rein this in, then maybe you'll start building up the sides. Think, well, maybe I don't want this to go out to the right. So maybe I'll just, you know, have a little stopper sort of thing here. So maybe I'll just kind of build up the mountain a little bit. And now it's not going to go that way. So when these flow down, they'll hit these spots. This is going to go straight out. This is going to go straight out. And this one will too. And then it's going to go this way and this way. Drop down, come out, and then you have a stream that's still pretty wide. So maybe I would just get rid of this. Like, maybe something like that. Or, I might even just, you know, get rid of all the potential area it could go. And now we're just left with this. <laughs> oh, man. So, it, you know, we're still tracking it. It's still going to go down to here. And let's see. From here, it would have to go straight out. It'll go down. And it's going to go straight out again. Because there's you know, air over here and there's block here. Same with on this side. Do you want it to do that? Maybe we want it to start to, you know, have a little bit more character than that. So what I might do actually is build this up, put a wall in front of it, build that up, so it's not going to flow that way anymore. Make this look a little bit more natural. And now it has a chance to flow this way. So it's going to flow like that, like that, and like that. And that's going to go down to here. This will go down to here. And you know what? I think I want to just keep that from going this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to <laughs> find a reason to have a piece there. So time to... Uh, make that look plausible <laughs> and we're gonna kinda guide this thing let's you know give this somewhere to go see now it's now it's not just a straight shot toward the ground this is a very here I'll fill this in this is a very uh, concise orderly we know exactly where the water is gonna go because of this And not only do we know where it's going to go, but we're actually telling it where to go. Which is pretty awesome, I think. Now this is going to flow this way and this way. This is going to come down. It's going to flow out these ways. I'm going to make sure that, yeah. So that's blocked. These will come down here. And you know what? Maybe we want to just have a big finish here. Let's uh let's kind of get rid of some of this. 
and give it sort of a spot to fall into. So I, I'm a, I'm a fan of having sort of uh, oops, kind of a uh, a pool underneath the waterfall, sort of where it's where it's falling to. Because it also gives it the third part, which is where is it going. So it's where is it coming from, what's it doing on the way, and where is it going. And so what you can do here is this is just sort of like a for instance. It's gonna it's gonna come down and go into this little area. And at this point, you don't know if that's like a uh, I can, that's going to go further some other direction. In fact, a lot of times, I like to put uh, like your, your hidden caves there, here. You know, stuff that's kind of behind it. And it kind of makes sense, too, because um, waterfalls in nature, they have this little area behind them where like the, the stronger, the, the sediments sort of kind of wash away behind there. So, you could even put you know, an underwater, uh, you know, cave or something. So yeah, here I'm, this is where the truth comes out. I did build this mountain. <laughs> if you want to see how to build mountains, look at my other tutorial. So now that we have that, and if that looks good to you, looks good to me, we can get rid of all the wool and the water. Whoops, the water will do exactly this. And if this seems tedious to you, there is actually a faster way, but this is really being thorough about how tracking how you can possibly track the water. Like I want to make sure that that's clear before any quarters are cut. But if you take a look at this after I take it away, you'll see something. You didn't really have to map out everything. Like if you if you look at this you can kind of see that the stones are gonna where the stones are gonna guide the water. Like if the water falls down here, it'll eventually be here and it'll kind of flow into this stuff. And it makes sense that the only place it can go is out the front. And if this wasn't here and you wanted to make sure it fell out the front, you'd put that there. Or um, you know, and if you bring it out here, there's sort of uh, little bookends as I like to call them. Like if these weren't there we wouldn't know where the water is going. But this kind of funnels it, and instead of coming out here, this funnels it. And this funnels it. So anywhere you want the water to go, just this is one way to do it, is kind of make a little groove so that when the water falls down or flows, it just can't go out. And you only have to worry about the source block. You don't have to make it this wide if the water's here. The water will find the hole, <laughs> and then it will go down, and you'll be fine. So, let's uh, put a bunch of water in here, shall we? Alright, ah, beautiful. At least I, I think that's freaking gorgeous. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And that looks like it goes in a nice area over here. Ooh, interesting. It actually didn't flow that way. Oh, that's because of that. Okay, so, oh, here's another crazy thing about water is you can take away stuff and it won't. If 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 you want to do anything to kind of correct the water, you can always put down a source block. But after you put down the water, if you start removing stuff, you never know what's going to happen. So I'll I'll leave it with that. If you want this to look even even fuller or better, <laughs> just fill it up with a pool. And there, you have a you have a, a waterfall that looks pretty cool. And I think and this is just my opinion. I'm not gonna say it's a fact, but I think that looks better than this. There's just something about that one that looks better than this. So that's what I got. Really, I'm honest. That's that's what I got. Um, this has been hopefully not confusing. It's been now, now that I'm actually saying it, it seems really confusing. So I I hope this made some sense. Um, I'm gonna review the video to make sure. 
and hopefully edit all this out at the end. If I don't, then, well, I guess you get to hear what I'm thinking about as I'm making this. Like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. How is anyone going to follow this? This is super confused. This is this is pretty, um, I think this is kind of a, a tough one to wrap your head around. And I can't really think of too much any easier ways to do it than these examples. But I, I really do hope that this kind of helps. And I hope that you can come up with really cool waterfalls or or uh, anything like that that uh, looks fancy. This has been Red McNed on uh, waterfalls. So thanks for watching.